Doodle bud. It's just an ink. How bad can it really be? So I just had to do it. We we're out today. It was a holiday up here in Canada. Took the kids to Granville Island, get some fish and chips and play around. And there happens to be a little stationery store there and they carry Noodler's ink. And I wandered in before and saw Bay State Blue, but was too scared to get it. But today I had the brilliant idea. Let's just get it. Let's check it out. It's just ink at the end of the day. Are the horror stories true or is it, you know, people blowing this out of proportion? I figured let's put it in this Twisby Eco white body here cap and that. So maybe it stains it. I don't know. Let's find out. It's clear. People say once you fill a pen with Bay State Blue, it will forever have to be designated a Bay State Blue pen. So I don't use this one a ton. People have a this pen, like everyone has one of these. So let's try this out. I'm going to ink it up, get my first impressions. I have not dared open this bottle yet. And there's a big sign in the store that says, do not open these bottles. Yeah, I wonder why. You're going to find out in a second. Now, I was thinking, should I get gloves out or should I just do this ungloved? I'm not going to be a baby. Let's just open this up. Now, this is the part. I did a video on this before, how they fill these right to the tippy top brim. And I complained about it a bit. And then some people are like... Just lighten me up in the comments. I'm so privileged. I I bet you've never missed a meal in your day. I'm like, no, here's the deal. You go to the drive-thru at McDonald's for a coffee and they pass it to you through the drive-thru window. If that sucker is right to the tippy top, the second you grab it, it spills in your hand. It's like, hey, what are you doing to me? So same thing. This is actually the most room I've ever seen in a Noodler's bottle. And the, the challenge is the second you go to put a pen in, it can spill over top the other thing. So this is like, you know, one thing about getting stained. But here's the other practical thing. This is water, mostly water. When it freezes, it expands. Up here in Canada, we have a cold winter. And if you don't have any room in this bottle, the sucker's going to shatter in the wintertime. So like, that's the other part too. Anyways, get angry at me if you will in the comments. But I'm just saying, other inks that... Uh, give you 60 mil or 90 mil or whatever the volume is, they do leave a little room. Is there enough? Oh, we got just enough. Okay. That's not so bad then on this one. We do have enough room. I've had others. The second you put the pen in, it spills. Okay. Well, that wasn't so bad. You know, no spillage. Okay. Happy so far. It's a nice looking color. That looks quite bright and saturated. Okay. There we go. That's uh, a little dab there, but that's not so bad. Put that back in the box for safekeeping. Okay, so far not so bad. Let's wipe this up. Okay. Huh. That sort of reminds me of uh, Sapphire Blue by Monteverde so far. All right. Let's get that little dot out of here and get to writing. That doesn't even seem so bad to take off. What are people freaking out about? going to test a bunch of papers. First up is Rhodia. I think this is a writing sample I did for some of my favorite blue inks. So let's put it on here. I noticed Sargasso C isn't on here from Diamine. That's like one of my favorites, so I'll add that on here too. Now I think those swatches were done with the Q-tip, but whatever. Let's just do that. Oh, that is a really nice color. Look at that. That's really nice. All right, let's do uh, Sargasso C while we're at it here. Do it that way. So far, on quick look here, it's the closest ink I have to Bay State Blue. Um, it's, it looks like it's feathering a little bit on here. I don't know, I can't quite tell. I'll, I'll, what I'm gonna do is do the other writing samples. This is a little bit darker. This does have a nice vibrant blue to it though. It really does pop. I get the appeal to the color. Um, these are all nice inks, but you can see just how much that stands out. The Monteverde Horizon Blue is kind of close to it, but yeah, something special about that base date. So first up is having a look here on the Rhodia paper. You can see if you get closer, the edges are off a little bit. Looks like we're getting just a little bit of like feathering on some of the letters. It's not quite a super clean C on the end there. That line there has just got a little bit of featherness to it. You can see on the lines there too. So 
I'm guessing this is a very uh, low surface tension ink. It is much brighter than the Sargasso C. And like I said, the closest thing so far is the uh, Monta Zerde Horizon Blue. But this, yeah, it has a very nice kind of velvety, vibrant color to it. Let's check out, let's do some of this Muji paper. So this is some of the, my nicer Muji paper. I really enjoy working with this. And so you can see here the Diamine Sargasso C, even with a, a flex nib, it's putting down a fair amount of ink on those. The edges are, are pretty clean, a little bit of, you know, feathering going on, just a hair. But even on the noodlers on the base state, it's it's kind of doing it right out of the gate. Now it is a stub, but this lays down a lot of ink when I'm doing that stuff. Um, so yeah, it does seem like that. I'm going to do the uh, capillary tube test just to have a look in a moment here. And then my favorite is the regalia paper. It really pops on there. Again, I don't know how what the camera picks up, but yeah, especially in this, it's just so vibrant and bright and full. It's a very, I could see the appeal to it. A little bit of shading. No uh, sheen or nothing like that. I'm going to see what it's like with water, if it withholds that. And then I'm also going to get some on my hand, see how easy it is to wash off. But let's quickly do the uh, capillary tube. Okay, here we go. Let's get a little sample. Oh, splash me already. Ooh, I can already see. Look how, yeah, that gets on your skin good. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll do a more fierce sample. Let's dip this in here. Okay, oh, look at that tube already. I'm gonna leave it uncapped over here just to see what happens. Wish me luck. So we're really coating that tube. Seems to move pretty quick once we get the coating on here. There we go. Yeah, that's a fairly, fairly wet ink. I could see why it, it does make it hard to clean out. It is fully coating that pen. And so then once it's coated, you know, it's just gonna draw the next molecules along. So yeah, it very, it wets it very well. So yeah, it's a pretty wet ink. I think I do have others that are more wet maybe, but this, this, yeah, that's a fairly wet ink. No point in letting a good ink sample go to waste. So let's just get this on here, a little on the finger, and let me see what it's like to try to wash that off. So I'm right back from the sink soap and water that really didn't touch it let's try some other stuff i also emptied out the twisby just returned the ink into the bottle i gotta clean this pen out uh just from this alone i'm actually gonna go put some gloves on <laughs> that was a pretty terrible pour oh but look at this that accident turned into a fantastic test Look how that held up. I mean, this got completely soaked in my homegrown pen wash. And look, yeah. Oh my God. That is crazy, crazy permanent. I'm a little scared now. Now I normally clean out pens in the sink, but the sink we have here downstairs where I do my work is a white sink. And uh, I don't want my wife to absolutely murder me. So I'm gonna do it this method. And we'll see, we'll see how clean we get this. I'll try the ink, uh, sorry, the pen wash as well, seeing how it handled the paper. We shall see. But I mean, it's flushing out so far. Let's just keep at this and uh, see where we get to. I'm hoping you can see this here on the camera. It's tough to get it, but so this was the container that I just put the pen in and drew up fresh water. This is the one that I put the ink into but you can see already. So I just, this was mega diluted. And just cause the ink, the water level was up here, there's a little bit of ink. You can see there's already a blue ring <laughs> just in this container alone. So yeah, this ink does not mess around. You can see the feed, it's like in there really good. I flush this more in the sink and it's just clear water. No pigment whatsoever or color coming into it. And you can see what it's, already done here to the section there we go a piece of paper so you can get the full effect it has been in there for however long this video has been going on for that's it and it's already done that it's okay but just look at the difference in the clarity before and after the piston wow let me try some pen wash i mean you can still see all the blue in there it's not touching it let me throw this in the ultrasonic cleaner 
with it being full of pen wash. After a go in the ultrasonic bath for like five minutes, I don't know if there's much improvement. You can even see markings from the fins on the feed in this thing. So I got the uh, pen wash here, a Q-tip. Let's see if it needs a little scrubby-dubby. Look at that, that is still totally white. I don't think anything is coming off. So I've been scrubbing for about five or six minutes with the Q-tip. I guess it's a little bit better, but that is absolutely intense. So that's with pen wash and just getting in the very end here in the section going nuts. But if you know, getting those internals, I can pull the piston and maybe get down in there, but then those internals, I can't reach that. So this really does leave a mark. I do have this container here. And I put a little Bay State Blue on it, I, uh, you know, because I, I can't go crazy hard with solvents on this without melting the pen. I do have an, a couple Altum pens, but I really like the way they look. I don't want to, you know, permanently stain it. So I just got this container here. I'm going to let that sit for a minute. Then I'll try some isopropyl alcohol to see if it can take that off. All right, let's just try to wipe it off. See, that actually comes off pretty good on here. I can see the the film it leaves, but yeah, different plastics obviously will behave differently. It, it's got the blue hue. Let me put the paper, there we go, now you can see it. So let's see if I can get rid of that blue hue with using some isopropyl alcohol. So having a look now, it's a little tough with the lighting and I get that shadow. And you can see from the Kleenex there, I did get quite a bit of it off. So I think if you have a pen and it, like, if you really need to get a pen clean, obviously, if, if you don't mind it having a little of that blue hue now, you're okay. Uh, but yeah, if you have a pen that's, I guess, potentially Altum or maybe Polycarb, maybe it's safe because you can get some harsh chemicals going. Now let's go back to this finger. So typically, I've been using this stuff. I know there's other ink things for your hands, but let's just try this stuff. Put some of this goo on spray here and give it a rub yeah it's not really touching that at all is it I think this finger is gonna be blue for a better part of a week now you're not supposed to put it on your hand but in the name of YouTube let's see if that dents it at all oh yeah, that's doing a little bit more Now, I don't recommend you go dousing yourself with IPA, but that turned out not too bad. Now, this will be the last test I do. I'm going to dip the Q-tip in here in the background. Whoa. Let's just see what happens to the white. Okay. Let's say you spilt some ink on the pen or that it got in the cap or whatever it is. Let's, uh, let's try to remove that. So that's about as good as I can get it. We still have some sort of in the corners and it's not that I can't reach it. It's just that that portion got a little more ink on it. So it got more saturated, but even on the dot there, it's not fully out. There we go. So that gets it out. So IPA is the ticket. Of course, the challenge with that is you can't go putting this on all your pens. It will melt some of them or it could cause cracking over time or, or just really damage it. If there's a finish on it, it could melt it too. So I did it really quick just to see. I don't think there'll be any long-term damage just to that little bit I put on the cap, but you definitely don't want to soak a pen in it. So overall, is it worth it? Like it, this definitely will be staining pens. I, I completely agree with what the claims people make now with that. The color is, I mean, this pops. It's just like this electric color. Very, very attractive. That's on the regalia. Here it is on the Rhodia. Is it worth it? Well, I mean, if you want something permanent, this absolutely blew my mind. It just got soaked and it's still standing strong. So it put it on envelopes or something like that. Absolutely. That is just crazy good. So people say, if you're going to put Bay State Blue ink in a pen, they're just going to be best buddies forever. Um, I mean, if it's not a demonstrator pen, you're not going to see the internals. Yeah, just, just let it, you know, it's going to stain. I, I don't think it's going to mix with other inks if I put a different ink in here afterwards. I was flushing this thing like crazy and it's just, it just clings on to it. 
I don't think it will interact with other inks. So if you want to change up the color afterwards, you can you can do that, and it'll come out that color, whatever. If you put you know green or red or something like that, no problems. I don't I don't think. Um, but just be prepared if it's a pen like so it's going to let you know it was there. Bay State Blue was here. So all I can say, I like the color. Be prepared for the cleaning. I am very glad I did not flush out my Twisby pen here in the sink like I normally do in the white sink. It would for sure have stained it. Even just from rinsing out the other containers, I already saw a little blue ring. I had to go scrub that immediately so I don't get in mega trouble. So this ink is a troublemaker. I, I completely agree with it. But it looks really nice. So, I mean, so what? This will be a base date blue pen now. Or it has some stains on it. It still functions. It'll be okay. Maybe don't put this in your super high-end pens. You want to keep in pristine condition. Or, you know, if you don't see the insides, who really cares anyways? But it will always let you know it was there. It will never go away, I don't think. Unless you get some harsh chemicals. So anyways, I had to do it. I don't feel bad I did. I like the color. I'll probably refill this pen, put my fine nib on there, because this is very, very saturated. It is blowing through on cheaper paper. So I'll go with the fine nib so it's not quite as wet and play around with this. And maybe I'll report back if my mind changes. But overall, eh, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's got a cool color, mega permanence. What's wrong with that? Love to hear what your, your thoughts are on that. Hit the subscribe. Catch you next time.